last semester at COD. But I am being held back because at the beginning of the semester, I wasn't able to get one of the classes that I need. So hopefully, if I can get the class in the fall semester, I'll be able to graduate in December, and in spring, I can go to CSUSB. I'm hoping. Because CSUSB actually hasn't told anybody yet if they're going to allow transfers in the spring with my major. And the reason that I wasn't able to get my class, and the reason that CSUSB might turn me down, is because our state is facing excruciating budget cuts in education. According to a report published in the New York Times in July of 2011, the California State Community College System and the UC and CSU systems both stand to lose about $650 million over the course of the year, which accounts for $1.3 billion in education funding that's no longer there. When education is so important to our society as far as advancing our society and healing our, our economic crisis, it's not acceptable to make these cuts in this area. According to a report published by the California Post-Secondary Education Commission in 2010, there were 2.3 million students trying to get through the state-funded school systems, which accounts for 6% of our population that's being affected by this crisis. So today, in order to impress upon you the importance of standing up for yourselves and putting a stop to this, I'm going to talk about three things. First, I'm going to talk about the way that this is affecting the students. Next, I'm going to talk about a little bit about why we have a budget crisis to begin with. And then, I'm going to tell you what you can do to be sure that you can graduate in two years at community college instead of five. You don't need a high school diploma in order to understand why a budget crisis is going to affect you. However, students nowadays are feeling it in even more acute ways than normal. The most prominent for me this year was course offerings. According to a news report on KMIR 6 last December, COD had to cut 300 course offerings at the beginning of the semester. The, the office staff at COD told that same reporter that there were 1,000 students who were turned away the first week of school because they were not able to crash courses or register for anything. So that was 1,000 people that left with absolutely nothing. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but according to an article last month in the Palm Desert Patch, in the fall, COD is going to be cutting 100 more courses because they can't afford them. The next thing we really have to talk about is tuition. We know prices are rising, but when I started in 2005, I was paying $17 per unit. Last semester, or this semester, I paid $36 per unit. And they're going to be rising once again because next semester in the fall, we're going to be paying $46 per unit, which is a rise of $10 over the course of six months. CSU, or CSU system and UC system haven't escaped either. According to the San Francisco Dispatch, um, CSU's had to double their tuition since 2007. And the last thing we really have to talk about are teachers. Our professors are leaving. And sometimes it's because they're not being renewed for the next semester because there's not a course for them to teach. Sometimes they're being fired because there's not enough salary in the budget. And sometimes they're leaving to teach out of state because on average, teachers that teach outside California at similar institutions are making 15% more than the ones teaching here. So in order to understand why this is happening, I'm going to give you a 30 second economic lesson. If you have more money leaving the budget than you have coming into the budget, you're going to end up with a deficit, which means you have too much spending and not enough taxes. At the beginning of the year, 2012, we had a $9.2 billion deficit, according to an Associated Press article entitled, California Facing Higher Than $16 Billion Shortfall. The title of that article will tell you that by the end of the year, we're expecting a $16 billion deficit. And the governor's office has given us three reasons for this. Number one, they are not seeing the, tax, the income taxes that they thought they were going to. Number two, the projected economic growth that they were expecting at the beginning of the year has not happened. And number three, lawsuits and federal restrictions are keeping them from making the budget cuts that they did plan to make. We also have a very, very bipartisan society, which means that we're not going to find a solution to the tax problem that's going to make everybody happy. However, 
If we increase our sales tax by just a quarter of a cent, meaning we go from 7.75 cents on the dollar to 8 cents on the dollar, we can expect to decrease our deficit by about half. So what can you do? Three big things that you can do to fix this problem. Number one, educate yourself. I know politics are scary and economics are very murky, but the first step in effecting change is understanding what needs to be changed. And an educated protester is going to be way more effective than somebody who's just yelling canned slogans. The second thing you can do is vote. You've all heard the Rock the Vote campaigns, and you know that we have voter apathy everywhere, and I know that 50% of the students at this school don't vote, which is a crime, because this is what's affecting us. And right now, whether you're Democratic or Republican, I'm telling you, if you vote for tax cuts, you're going to be getting that money taken out of somewhere else. And right now, it's coming out of education, which is unacceptable. And the last thing that you can do, oh, I'm sorry. By the way, the rule in this country is if you don't vote, don't bitch. <laughs> the last thing that you can do is complain. You have to talk to the people who can actually affect change. And these are just two of them. Governor Jerry Brown and our state senator for this district, Bill Emerson, both of them need to hear from us. So I talked about things that we are seeing as problems with this budget deficit. And I also talked about why it's happening just a little bit. And I told you what you could do to fix it. Two months ago, I was in this counselor's office filling out my student education plan. And I made an offhanded complaint about how it was going to take me two years to complete two semesters worth of work because the classes weren't there. And my counselor, who was not one to mince words, told me to stop complaining and do something about it. And he was right. He told me that when the complaints come from the teachers, it sounds like they're complaining about their salaries, which, by the way, they have a right to do. But when the complaints come from us, it's stronger than that. We have a responsibility to fix this because it's affecting us the most. If we all yell loud enough, they're going to listen to us.